Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes, creative homes, and share stories of the nomadic movement. In today's video, we're actually gonna tell a story about someone who is upsizing into a tiny house. Sam started out living out of his backpack, but now he lives in a renovated school bus that he was able to convert for just $10,000. Sam makes his living as a traveling artist, and I recently commissioned him to sculpt a juniper tree out of copper wire for me. As some of you might know, my daughter's name is Juniper, so this piece means a lot to me, and I gave him total creative freedom, so he decided to add the rock himself, which I absolutely love. So let's take a tour of Sam's renovated school bus and learn what it's like to be a traveling artist. And if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time I publish a new tour. Hey, I'm Sam and welcome to the Serendipity Bus. When I was just a kid, you know, even before I could drive, I was spending a lot of time outdoors and in nature. That led me to hike on the Pacific Crest Trail. So I did 2,600 miles of backpacking and over five months you really learn how to travel, how to just be really mobile. So when I found this bus, I was just driving down the highway and it's on the side of the road with a for sale sign and I could see the, uh, the possibilities. I've had this rig since basically 2016. I really enjoyed just having the bus empty and working with the open space uh, like a blank canvas. It can feel like an overwhelming task, but when you set an overall goal, it helps to work then backwards from there and say, okay, here's the priorities. Putting in that labor, that sweat equity, it's worth it. My bus was $3,000 when I got it. Another couple thousand, you know, in terms of necessities. Financially, uh, I do a lot of odd jobs and I just try to live really simply. Selling artwork is becoming my main focus and drive. I've got a lot of different creative outlets and I do photography and been doing different wire wrapped artwork. I love to just work with whatever materials I can find, you know, that are oftentimes overlooked or that need to be utilized instead of just thought of as trash or scrap. The bus itself is really like a canvas of that lifestyle, you know. I wanted to create something that allowed me to have functionality, artwork, and room to live. This is a 77 Ford B500. It's a five window bus. The bus overall is about 28 feet with the motorcycle and everything on there. It's really capable off-road. It's got low gearing in it and it just allows it to crawl over stuff. And I've gone some places I probably shouldn't have gone in a school bus. <laughs> My bus comes prepared. I've got a 10,000 pound winch on the front so that I can pull other people out, which is basically all I've ever used it for. Snow, ice, sand, it doesn't matter. It's an amazing tool. So this is my smokestack for my wood stove, and I just take it down when I need to travel. So that panel that I created fits into the window and is all sealed off and holds the chimney in place. Keeps everything from lighting on fire. I chose to just do this setup because certain times of year you don't even need to have the wood stove, plus it's a hole in the roof and that's going to leak every single time. It's really hard to seal. So I'll take all this down when I travel, but then also I'll just take the whole wood stove out of the bus in the summer and enjoy that extra space. My bike is a 2011 Suzuki DRZ 400. Just like the bus, I've totally built it out to be a really independent unit so I can put all my gear on the bike. I've got a whole independent toolkit and I love to just hop on this thing. The efficiency and the speed is 10 times what a bus is so it can just save some gas and explore everywhere that I want. Anything wrong with the bus or for some reason you know you got a good parking spot you don't want to lose it you just drop this thing down and and head off. Underneath the motorcycle is the rack that holds it and that's something that me and my pops came up with and using this chain hoist, it actually is a two-piece construction and the whole thing 
drops down to the ground. So I don't need any ramps or anything and I can just easily balance my motorcycle there while I'm getting it strapped down and then bring it right back up. Up here in the front, I've got my hood ornament that I added, which is my Howling Wolf, which really means a lot to me when I'm going down the road and just like watching that and having that projecting forward as you know the essence that I'm bringing. But the whole front of the bus is super classic, very much uh, the same style that they used since like the 60s. So this thing gets a lot of attention just because it is old and it looks even older. <laughs> So one of my favorite additions that I've done on my bus is fabricating this into one single door. And so it uh, is a matter of building a frame that can support them and then adding a handle just like a standard door and you're all set. Welcome to the inside of the bus. This is where I've created my happy place to be able to hang out. I really wanted to focus on the woodworking in this build and try to make it nice, but also try to make it really durable. Wood is great for a lot of things. It's very lightweight and with the right engineering and joint work and stuff, you can make it strong. And so a lot of this is all framed internally and then just covered by the finished wood that makes it look nice and allows for everything to function properly. In the very back, I've got my bathroom slash closet, and actually this is where I started my build. I wasn't gonna do my very best work initially. So I started back here, made the door, and then realized by the time I get to the kitchen or the front how I wanna do it right. And so this is kind of like the beginnings as it were, uh, but I've got my door, full length mirror, little Porter John bathroom, and then I can store all sorts of stuff here in the bathroom and just close the door keep the bus clean and hide stuff away. There's such a little amount of space in a bus that all your doors obviously have to be able to swing open. Given this width, I decided to go with bifold closet doors, which allow me to just get past here still and, and have a lot more ease of access. Definitely loved being able to hang up all my clothes, but then also just throw things in here, make them disappear. So I've got enough room in here that I can hang up all my clothes and jackets and store motorcycle helmets and exercise equipment and everything in there. So down below that is where I've got my drawers of stuff and those all are secured when I'm driving so that they don't roll around. And then all of this is all custom made by me. So you can't buy doors like this, but you can make them if you know the size and know how to work with materials to make that double hinge function properly. So here in the back, I wanted to create a space that was a lot more private than in the front. And so I've got blinds that I can drop down over this back window. And then over the rest, I added this privacy film, which is really nice because it lets the light in, but you just can't see through it. And so when I'm back here, it can really just be like my zone. In the past, I had my bed mounted up high and it's cold near the windows. That visibility is weird, all that. and so. I definitely wanted to have it at a height that would allow me to be comfy down here and almost be like down below the line of the windows. This bed will also fold up Murphy style under these cabinets so that I can have a lot of room back here for bikes or for more storage, anything like that. So for my dinette table, I wanted to have something that not only was a little bit of a surface but allowed for storage inside of it. So it's about six inches deep and that allows for the table itself to kind of cover everything. The leg that supports it also fits right inside and you've got a dinette table. Got a nice space for working, can do photo editing or different things that I need to here on my monitor and it makes a nice useful space. This is my wood stove, which I use a lot in the winter and just that heat from a wood burning fire is the only way to make just the whole bus hot. And so I love this thing. It's something that I custom made as well. It's able to fit a full length piece of firewood so I don't have to cut my firewood down into little blocks. And then that also allows it to run for quite a while. I did have to fabricate it so that it would be at the height that I wanted, which allows me to store some firewood here underneath. And then also at the right height so that the chimney can come up 
and then we had an angle to go up out of this panel that I made. The panel has a matching shape to the top lip of the window. It actually clips onto it, put the window all the way down and then put it up a click and it holds it in place securely. So a couple of my favorite things about my kitchen was just to keep it really simple. And so I didn't want to have a real elaborate setup. I wanted something utilitarian with a strong edge where I can just put stuff here on the counters if I need to. But I also wanted to be sure and have my tall counter. So many buses, the counter at the window is such a low angle that it's hard to, to do a lot of chopping or whatever you might need to do. And so this surface alone lets me have just so much more real estate. But then of course, it's gotta fold out of the way so that it's not a problem later. And then I just try to keep everything simple, you know, you got water down here, storage, and my fresh and gray tank. So it's really important to maximize every inch of available space. So I've got my countertops built back a little bit further than where my closet is which allows me to have this really nice storage that I made for spices and teas and that sort of thing, and utilize this space that would otherwise kind of be hard to access or would maybe be unsightly. So this just disappears right into the, the wall there and makes for a nice storage of all the little stuff. Everything in the kitchen bounces around, everything in the whole bus bounces around, so it was important to have latches on all my cabinets that would make sure that nothing falls out while I'm driving down the road. So up here in front, I've got my captain's chair and I mounted that onto a swivel. So here up front is where I can command this vessel from. And so I've got my eight ball shifter, my classic gauges, tachometer. I put this aftermarket steering wheel on there just cause you don't need a big steering wheel for a bus and it's a lot more comfortable for driving it. I highly recommend doing something that'll be comfortable for you when you're going down the road. I also have my CB radio and then my control panel which i've rewired to kind of have what i want right now which is my wipers my wiper delay and then basically lights and heaters so i don't have ac in this bus but i do have something that's pretty cool which is a hood vent that goes straight to the inside so when i'm going down the highway now i can get air blasting right down through here. I've never seen any other buses with them. I mean, they're, it's an old school thing for sure. But I don't think AC was an option in the 70s. <laughs> Not on a school bus. <laughs> I've got a mirror here that actually doubles as a rear facing camera and a forward facing camera. So that allows me to see my motorcycle and see what's going on back there. Know if I'm gonna crash into something. <laughs> I use a lot of different navigation tools and so Map and Compass is what I learned how to navigate with and it's more than just navigating, it's about knowing where you are, knowing how you got there and how you're going to get to the next place. And so if you can read a map, you can really find some amazing places. And geography is destiny. And you're either going to be choosing where you're at or it's going to be chosen for you. And so if you have the ability to live nomadically, you are able to choose that destiny, choose that spot. So being in a bus or being a nomad is kind of like being a hummingbird and we can fly around and we can actually travel like long, long distances. And then we can hover in place and just, you know, enjoy that like nectar of life, basically, and then fly along to a new place. about you, but artists like Sam really inspire me to spend more of my free time developing my skills. So that's where this week's sponsor, Skillshare, comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. For example, I already have a background in filmmaking, but after taking a few classes on Skillshare specifically about developing a YouTube channel, I've been able to hone in and make higher quality and more interesting content for you guys. But outside of my work life, I find that Skillshare is a really fun way to find a new hobby. 
After taking an indoor gardening class with Ekta Chantry, I learned what ornamental house plants would be best for a small space with low to medium light. I finally understood why I keep killing all of my plants. And so far, it's working out pretty well. Don't be shy guys, say hello. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Well, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Skillshare can help make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and connection through creativity. It's time to invest in yourself and your personal growth. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description and code TINYHOUSEGIANTJOURNEY0522 will get a one free month trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks for watching this week's video. I will see you soon with another tiny house or creative home tour.